Hello to you. I'm Jesse R. Johnson. I'll be speaking to you today about permanent magnets, the secret of the two types of permanent magnetic field force cancellations. This is part two of two parts. This is part two of two videos of the same title. Now, to begin, two magnets repel each other and a piece of magnetizable metal is put between them exactly in the middle. The metal is of an exact thickness, exact length, and exact width. The magnets will be attracted to the metal simultaneously while repelling each other with equal force. This cancels the direction of motion of each magnet because the force of pull, which is the magnet's attraction to the metal, is equal to the force of push, the magnets repelling each other. The forces are equal but opposite, hence force cancellation, like a rope being pulled from both ends by equal forces but in opposite directions. An illustration of this. As you can see, a rope is being pulled from both ends by 100 pounds on each end in opposite directions, in the direction of the arrows, that is. Now, the rope will stay at zero along the middle line. If you look at the middle of the page, you will see a zero at the top of the page where the rope will stay at zero along this middle line. This is the simple principle of permanent magnet magnetic field force cancellation. This video is made because of some of the comments received from part one video of the same title. It boils down to two general questions. One, what is the shape of the magnetic field lines? And two, what practical use can this magnetic cancellation effect be used for? As shown in part one of this video, the force of repulsion between both magnets, which are oriented either north to north or south to south, is equal to the force of the attraction of the magnets to the cancellation metal. Opposing directional forces, but equal force, cancels the direction of motion to zero or simply permanent magnet magnetic field force cancellation occurs. Nothing happens, nothing, nothing happens to the magnetic fields or the magnetic field force itself. They are not destroyed. They're still there. They are simply equal but opposite directional forces at the same point. Therefore, the fields of attraction and repulsion are phased within each other and therefore look like this as an illustration. Now, on the left is magnet 1, if you look at the bottom, M1, and on the right is magnet 2, drawn in black. The north poles of each magnet is turned toward each other, hence repulsion. This is shown as the letter N written inside each magnet. Between magnet 1 and magnet 2 is a piece of magnetizable cancellation metal placed in the exact middle, also drawn in black and identified as the letter CM in the upper right of the drawing. The magnetic field that is attracted to the metal is shown in red and is identified as a red A at bottom right and produces a complete oval shaped field. Phased within this red attractive field is a green repulsive field drawn in green with dashed lines and identified as a green letter R at bottom right also. Now the repulsive fields are pushing each other away from each other along the exact middle line. This is generally what the fields look like as drawn here. A simple, physical, rough working model is shown in part one of this video. 
Now, the big question, what is the physical practical purposes of this simple principle? First off, an electromagnet can be turned off and on by an electrical switch because it runs on electricity. A permanent magnet, magnetic field cannot, cannot be cut on and off like an electromagnet. So a way is needed, a form is needed to mimic or imitate this effect. So a machine built and based on this principle has been constructed and for total details, for total details, an illustration please, please go to YouTube and write in Permanent Magnet, the Johnson Machine, how to make a working, semi-self-sustaining machine, or simply please click the link below in this video. Humans have been trying to make this system for centuries. This system has been searched for for several centuries. The system is semi because a true perpetual motion machine over unity machine, a free energy machine, and its derivatives are an impossibility. But a long-lasting self-running machine in the context of several weeks or several months or several years is not impossible but very possible. And I want to thank every one of you for listening and watching, and we will speak on other subjects in the near future. Have a good day.